Hi again, thank you for joining us for this special TechSoup hosted online discussion for physical year end reminders. This is all the things that we hope that will help your nonprofit succeed. I'm Aretha Simons here at TechSoup. I'm the webinar producer. Today I have with me Nick Finn. I love when Nick comes on. You're going to love him too. Um, he's the director of marketing and he's going to tell us a little bit more. But again, as, as I said, as you're coming in, let us know where you're coming from um, and the type of nonprofit you serve. So I know a few of you are familiar with um, the webinars. So you are on mute. So everybody's on mute. Um, this is how can we keep the quality of the webinar, but feel free to chat with each other in the chat room. If you have a question, use the Q&A feature. That'll kind of help you move up to the top and we love seeing your questions in the Q&A. If you like the question in the Q&A and maybe the same question that you have, just put a little thumbs up by it and that'll kind of move that question up to the top. But as I said, continue to engage with each other in the chat room. This is being recorded, so the recording will be available within 48 hours of this webinar. We'll email it to you. So what is this fiscal year in? What are we what are we talking about? What's happening during the fiscal year in? I know a lot of you had to transition and probably using more technology, you know, throughout this last 12 months or during the pandemic. So I kind of wanted to find out like what type of software or technology that did you use that you couldn't have done without, or maybe you didn't use before the pandemic started? Would you type in the chat room and let us know what technology that you're using? I don't know why I can't talk. Maybe I need to drink some water. <laughs> what technology are you using that maybe you didn't use before? Let us know. I know everybody's using Zoom because we're all using Zoom right now. And also, I'm kind of curious how your nonprofit is doing. You know. Um, Everybody had to transition. Some people are doing better now that we're working from home and using Zoom and communicating with more people. But what's the success? Has it, you know, been doing good for your nonprofit, or are you like still the same? Um, did things ramp up? Let us know in the chat room. Also, want to know if you have any struggles because today you're going to learn about some new technology that'll probably help you. Um, with your nonprofit. Let us know in the chat room what's going on with your nonprofit. I'm gonna move this over so I can see some of your chats, some of your comments. Wow, lots of comments. Teams and Zoom, yes. Online QuickBooks, yes. Google Docs, yes. Big need, awesome. Teams, a lot of people using Teams, that's good, that's good. Awesome. Tom said he needs lots of training for all the new technology. Yeah, and the people to manage the technology. I get it, I get it, Tom. Um, Chuck said he's a treasurer for a church. So people are giving. Oh, that's good, that's good. Teams and Zooms, this is good. Zoom, another one, WebEx, Zooms and Teams. Awesome. Um, with Shwana, I believe the challenge is currently is tax the fiscal year in and state and federal tax. Okay, I'd like to hear more about that. Um, Cause no, no one teaches that. Hmm, you wanna know about maybe the things that you need to do in order to stay compliant on the state federal level. I'm, I'm not sure um, what you meant by that, um, Ms. Juana. Um, Kate says you're using QuickBooks online. Little green light. Oh, very interesting. I'd like to know more about that. Okay, good, Ms. Juana, I got it, I got it. And you said tons of Google Docs and Canva. Love Canva, right? Love, love, love Canva. Awesome. Well, this is good. This kind of um, give us an idea of, you know, what you're using and, you know, what things has made a difference. The G Suite, yeah. G Suite, good. And I'm curious, <laughs> COVID sucks. <laughs> Some of our funding option out of the room. Wow, wow. So how have you been able to, you know, pivot when it took some of that out, Larry? I'd like to know, are you kind of, are you doing more fundraising, reaching your partners more now um, through this technology? Um, Carmen uses QuickBook and Excel. This is good. What's Canva? Chuck says, what's Canva? So go to canva.com. Um, it's where you can make flyers, posters. You can use them for Facebook, social media, and it's, and it's free. 
So um, it's a great way to get your flyers made, um, kind of make your nonprofit look more professional rather than using a graphic artist. They've kind of made some templates for you to use in Canva so you can use it. TechSoup offers green light. See, light green. This is what I know. There's so many um, partners that we have. I don't even know them all. This is great. Thank you, John, for sharing this with us. And put it to everyone, John. You, you, you put it to the panelists, so put it to everyone. Okay, Larry, being honest and how to ask. So being honest about that and the lack of um, in-person, okay, I'm sorry, it's going up so fast. In-person events hurts our revenue. Also, also, thank goodness for PPP. Otherwise, wow, we have a big hole in our budget. Yeah, I'm hearing that a lot. This is great. Wow, Nick, I hope this is giving you some insight. Yeah, on um, what, our, what our partners are doing. Yeah, this, this is terrific. I love seeing this list of uh, technology forward thinkers in the nonprofit sector. Um, and uh, I, you know, sometimes surprises are good, sometimes they're bad, but I feel as I read this list that I don't have surprises here, which for me right now is good because what it says is folks are using the tools um, that we thought would be important for them to use, um, especially in the context of the pandemic. Um, but before we go deeper into that, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Nick Finn. I'm the director of marketing at TechSoup. I know director of marketing, you think of that as being a very corporate thing, but remember TechSoup is actually a 501c3. We are a nonprofit ourselves, just like you. And so my job as director of marketing is really more like director of market communications. We like to talk with nonprofits about technology that's available to them. We have a lot of great offers uh, that we've negotiated on behalf of nonprofits that you have access to. Um, they're all over the techsuit.org website. Um, but we're here today to talk about specifically this moment in time, which for many nonprofits is the fiscal year end. Um, and just to recap what that means, lots of nonprofits have a fiscal budget that ends on June 30th. And on July 1st, they start working with a brand new operating budget that would what we would call fiscal 2022. Often what happens during this period when one fiscal year is ending and the next one is about to begin is nonprofits do a few things. First of all, they look at bits of budget that they still have left unspent. Um, and we all know in the nonprofit movement that you lay out a budget that says, here's what I want to accomplish this year. And these are the things that I need to spend it on. And when you get to the end of the year, you really need to do a, a view backwards and make sure that you have done the things that you've said you were going to do. And so a lot of nonprofits are doing that right now. The other big thing that happens is lots of nonprofits look forward to 2022 or whatever the next year is and ask themselves the question, what can I do right now to prepare for what I'm gonna to need to do next year. Now from TechSoup's perspective, technology can be an extremely powerful tool to help nonprofits accomplish their mission. And maybe none of us ever feel we truly accomplish our mission. Our mission are these things that we go out and we work on every single day and maybe it's never fully resolved, but any way you cut it, we believe technology can play a huge role in helping you be more effective, have greater impact, and at the end of the day, frankly, serve our communities better. And so our value to the nonprofit community, not just in the United States, but around the world, because we are a global organization at this point, our value is to bring technology to nonprofits at a, at a price point that's affordable and with the support and services on the back end to actually make it usable. Because at the end of the day, expensive toys that are difficult to work with don't really help anybody. TechSoup's point is let's make sure that technology is accessible and affordable and that we can support you as you implement it and learn how to use it. And we're gonna talk about all of those things today. Um, 
So going back to the list of technology I saw people write about, one of the ones that um, was really prominent right off the bat is QuickBooks. And I'm so glad to see people talking about that already um, because it is, I can tell you, one of the single most popular offers at TechSoup that nonprofits around uh, the country are using. Um, and if you're on this webinar today and your nonprofit is not using QuickBooks, um, I encourage you strongly to think about whether or not it is time to adopt a cloud forward or technology forward way of managing your finances. And if QuickBooks is something that you're interested in, TechSoup has lots of different ways that you can access QuickBooks, lots of different variations on that platform, but it is an extremely popular platform for TechSoup users. And so um, it's great to see people talking about QuickBooks already. Um, I want to start with the next slide where we kind of start going through a litany of some of the top things that nonprofits have really been looking to TechSoup for right now. And I'm going to start with hardware. Um, anybody who's had to purchase hardware over the last year knows that during the pandemic, um, prices have gone up and availability has gone down. And there are lots of reasons for this, but in the big picture, essentially, the supply chain for creating tech hardware has been really impacted by the pandemic over the last year and a half. Um, I've heard particularly the semiconductor industry, but it's not just that. Um, at the end of the day, it's been more difficult to get hardware and that hardware has cost more. We're starting to see that ease now, but TechSoup has definitely stepped up to try to help nonprofits get access to the hardware that they need. We have these relationships with Dell and Lenovo and HP, but the one I want to highlight today actually is refurbished hardware, which is available through TechSoup. And that has been a really popular option for nonprofits, one, because it's environmentally conscious. We're not just throwing away computers and throwing them in the trash heap. Um, instead, uh, newer computers that have already been used can go through a process of refurbishing where an outside sourcer checks that that hardware is still functioning. We may make a few upgrades here and there if they're necessary to get that hardware back up to a functioning level. But then that is essentially a reusable piece of hardware, a desktop or a laptop. And uh, nonprofits can save quite a bit of money by using refurbished laptops versus uh, refurbish or uh, brand new laptops. Um, we also have access to those as well, but the refurbish laptops are a great place for um, nonprofits to look, especially if you're trying to update um, the technology that your staff or volunteers have. Perhaps they're all working remotely now um, and uh, you just need to make sure that folks do have the hardware that they need to be able to work remotely. Uh, and if you look in um, chat, I think that uh, we're dropping in some links there. And um, what I wanna segue to here is that we in fact have put together an entire fiscal year end blog post. I'm gonna share several of these with, with folks today. But we have a whole fiscal year end blog post that focuses only on the hardware uh, options that TechSoup has for nonprofits. And so uh, we'll post that in chat here and you can grab that link and then in your own time after the webinar, just take a read through there. It'll tell you about what other nonprofits across the country are, um, are looking at and what they've been um, using from TechSoup. Now, three other partners that have been pretty popular this year. Um, Adobe, they are the folks who created the PDF, if you didn't know that. Um, they're also the folks who uh, run Creative Cloud. Um, Adobe has been one of the strongest supporters of the nonprofit movement through TechSoup for many, many years now. Um, and especially if you're a nonprofit that has a designer on staff or you have a communications function on staff, it's likely you're using Adobe Creative Cloud already. If you're not, and you wanted to use Adobe Creative Cloud, that's available through TechSoup. Um, and that would give you access to all the programs that you need for those communications functions, like Dreamweaver, which manages HTML and web presence. Um, you, of course, have Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, 
all fantastic pieces of software for creating graphic identity, both in print and online. Um, and uh, Adobe Creative Cloud has definitely been one of the big things that has helped nonprofits keep communicating with donors, keep communicating with the public, and provide you know a good, clean way to design and save and share what it is your nonprofit has to say with the public. Cisco is another big partner that a lot of nonprofits who rely on their networking equipment have used from TechSoup over the past year. Um, and so if you already use Cisco um, and you have any updates that you want to make to your Cisco technology stack, I recommend looking at the Cisco options that are in the TechSoup catalog. Um, and uh, I think those have been extremely helpful for nonprofits this year. And then the third one Aretha's already mentioned here is Zoom. And I can tell you, boy, at the start of the pandemic in February of last year, there was one single product that absolutely blew the doors off everything else for a period of time there. And it was when people realized that in a remote work environment, you needed a great, robust, modern way for everybody to speak to each other the way we are right now on this webinar. And thousands of nonprofits came to TechSoup so that they could um, start using Zoom. And I think it deservedly so became one of the most popular and, and helpful um, platforms for nonprofits during the pandemic. Um, we can bump to the next slide now and talk about some of the other offers that come through to, tech, uh, to nonprofits through TechSoup. Um, one of the really cool ones, and this is a bit of a hidden gem, but Autodesk. It is design and manufacturing software that lets you basically create much more sophisticated product or architectural drawings. And although a lot of folks would hear that and it wouldn't strike a chord with them in their nonprofit. There are a handful of nonprofits out there for whom Autodesk is actually an essential program. Um, and so if you are in the business in your nonprofit of needing to create some specific types of architectural or product drawings, even if it's for designing an office space or something like that, Autodesk is a very popular uh, option for nonprofits. Um, as we've all morphed into the remote work environment, of course, security has become an even bigger issue. Uh, you know, two or three years ago when we did webinars around security, it was much more about making sure that, you know, folks are using smart password technology, you know, and that you're paying attention and making sure that there's antivirus scanning going on in the background. But now with a remote workforce, security has to be one of the top concerns for every nonprofit. We have two great partners that we work with. There are several others, but the two I highlight here today are, sorry, three, Avast, Bitdefender, and then Norton. All three are available through TechSoup. They're excellent ways to secure your systems. Um, and if your nonprofit is trying to figure out what to do about security. There's a bevy of uh, recorded webinars. I think we have courses available through the TechSoup website on this as well, but a vast Bitdefender and Norton would be great places to start to make sure that you've got these laptops and desktop units locked down with the level of security that you need. And then another highlight on here um, is Mobile Beacon. Mobile Beacon provides internet hotspots. And these have been incredibly popular in particular with libraries during the pandemic. In a lot of more rural areas of the country where we've had trouble with broadband access, lots of folks are actually able to, first of all, use the internet at the library, but that's not new news. More recently though, they've been able to check out internet hotspots. It's literally a small physical box that you could then take to another location. It operates similarly to a cell phone where it pulls a satellite signal down and it provides you live internet coverage right where you are. These mobile beacon internet hotspots have been extremely popular. Um, and uh, I mention them here because if, if you're in a remote environment um, where that broadband access perhaps is a little more limited or tricky to work with, um, these mobile beacon internet hotspots might be something you wanna look at. 
Um, and I do want to share in chat um, a couple of the links to these blog posts that I was um, mentioning. I'm going to paste one right here. This is the top security options that we provide um, and especially of interest right now during the fiscal year end. So I definitely recommend taking a look at that and learning more about what it is that TechSoup has um, in the security area for you. And then also, because we're going to talk about this a little bit more, because TechSoup serves nonprofits across the country, and as I mentioned globally, we also have to think about how big are these nonprofits? And, and of course, they run the gamut. Um, we work with some extremely large nonprofits that have offices in hundreds of cities across the country, um, but we also work with lots of nonprofits who in some cases may only have one paid staff person, the executive director, maybe one or two. Um, and we have to think very realistically about what size budget does a nonprofit have? You know, one of the pet peeves I always have is um, I get a lot of outside businesses contacting us to ask, like, how can we better support the businesses that you serve? And the first thing I think about every time is like, well, you have to remember that we don't serve businesses. We serve nonprofits, and it's very different. You know, businesses may have expense accounts and larger budgets that they can devote to this kind of technology, but for nonprofits whose focus is on the front end work of serving our communities, those budget decisions are much tougher. And so we have to think about the budget size of these nonprofits. So what I'm gonna share with you right now is a blog post that we developed particularly for nonprofits who have an annual operating budget of $100,000 or less. Now for many small businesses, if you say that number, they're like, well, we can't even operate on that. But nonprofits are great at doing more with less. We are one of the hidden secrets in that regard. Um, and folks who are, operate with a budget of $100,000 or less still have plenty of opportunity to get technology that's going to help them achieve their mission, serve their community. So take a look at that blog post I just shared with you in chat. Um, and if you, if you have a budget that's around $100,000 or less each year, that would be the first place I'd recommend you take a look to see uh, what's available to you. If your budget is larger than that, don't worry. I have two more blog posts I'm going to share with you as well that explain in detail what those larger budget opportunities are. Let's go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, and these are other partners that we have again found pretty popular at TechSuit this year. Um, and uh, Tableau, DocuSign, VMware, Asana, and Veritas. Um, these run the gambit of security, backup and recovery, different ways to manage paperwork. And in fact, speaking of paperwork, I'm, I'm going to really zero in on one in particular, which is DocuSign. Um, you know, of course, when you work in the nonprofit world, you have a lot of friends who also work in the nonprofit world. And certainly, as I spoke with my network of folks over the past year about what was the greatest challenge that your nonprofit faced with COVID, a lot of it seemed to circle back to this notion that, well, we use these paper-based systems, but now nobody can go into the office to process the paper. And that that itself was creating a real problem for lots of nonprofits. So that's a great opportunity to think about something like DocuSign. And in fact, I think this is a great moment to think about how technology can be incredibly powerful. DocuSign lets you get documents signed as their clever name would tell you, digitally. You have a, a legal contract or some other piece of paperwork that you need a signature on. And in the old way of doing it, you would literally have to get in front of that person and have them sign it before it became legally binding. And But with DocuSign, you can send these documents digitally. You can collect those signatures digitally. This is a huge step for a nonprofit that may be stuck just doing paperwork. Um, so DocuSign has been an extremely popular uh, option for nonprofits for a few years now. Um, and I encourage you to really look at that in particular, if you're thinking about this notion of how to get some of the paperwork 
digitized in your nonprofit, that something like DocuSign is, is a really excellent thing to think about. Um, I also want to add two more blog posts to our chat here, if I can find where my mouse went. Um, as I said, we also have options for medium size and large size organizations. Here comes the blog post, now linked in chat, for medium size nonprofits. A medium sized nonprofit, in our way of defining it here, is basically between that $100,000 and $2 million annual budget. So if your budget falls into that category and you have the opportunity to maybe stretch a little bit in how you're using technology, um, I would encourage you to take a look at that blog post. Um, and you know, if, if you have a budget like that, you probably have a few other coworkers um, and share it between each other. Uh, talk through what in that list of options might be helpful to your nonprofit. Um, these blogs all have links in them that should take you directly to the product pages on techsoup.org um, and uh, yeah, really help you see what, uh, what different offers are available to you and, and which ones might be right for your nonprofit. And there are, of course, as I said, some much larger organizations um, with budgets well over $2 million a year. Um, and we know that, uh, you know, for larger organizations, technology becomes even more important because now you also have to manage a huge number of people and uh, usually sites and locations, and you've probably got a large website that gets a lot of traffic every year. So I'm sharing in chat here the, uh, the link to the blog post that talks about opportunities for organizations with budgets over $2 million. By the way, there's nothing wrong with reading all three if you wanna do that, <laughs> but I know we all have um, plenty to, uh, plenty to do right now. So that's why we tried to break it up into these three different blog posts so that um, you could, uh, you know, zero in and focus on the one that makes most sense to you. Um, let's move on to the next slide, because I do want to highlight something that's a little new for TechSoup now, um, which is that in the past, we have been, um, in the past, we have been an organization that really focused on bringing technology products from other companies to the nonprofit world. But as I mentioned at the front end, that really addresses the issue of how to make technology affordable to nonprofits. But that's not the complete picture because the longer we've done this work with nonprofits, the more we've come to understand that really choosing a technology product and then purchasing it or buying it or spending the money to get it is only part of the picture. There's almost a deeper piece, which is a little more difficult, which is to implement the product and then get your staff to begin using it properly. And so over the years, TechSoup has really come to understand that there's an entire backend function that we can serve to help nonprofits better by providing services and courses to help nonprofits and their staff do better with the implementation and use of this technology. These are new things for TechSoup in the sense that we've been doing it for the past three or four years now. Um, and not all nonprofits that we serve know about this. Now, as the guy who does a lot of the work on our email marketing, I do know that we talk about it a lot when we send email out to nonprofits. But, you know, we have to take every opportunity we can to talk about it. So here today, I want to bring up to you the services and courses that I think would be interesting for nonprofits to uh, look at. Um, either in advance of the next fiscal year or during the next fiscal year. Um, let's start with TechSoup courses. TechSoup courses are available through the TechSoup.org website, 
And if you navigate to the services drop down, you will see under there TechSoup courses. TechSoup courses exist on an, almost an entirely separate learning management system. An LMS platform is the, is the technical name for it. But there, John just dropped that into chat. Everybody can go check that out. Courses are where you can get education from TechSoup on all sorts of topical areas that matter. And one of the biggest chunk of chunks of content on TechSoup courses uh, has been produced in our partnership with Microsoft. Um, as folks may know, uh, Microsoft has been a big TechSoup supporter for a long time and have always been very willing to come to the table and help us work through uh, how to best help nonprofits. And the Microsoft Digital Skills Center is a set of customized nonprofit-centered educational tracks um, that are designed to really get you up to speed on some of the big Microsoft products that you may be using. I know I saw folks talk about Excel in the chat earlier. And yeah, I got to be honest, if I, you know, if you had to strand me on a desert island, but then through some strange way, I had to choose one computer program to have with me, it would be Excel. I'd probably starve to death quickly, but at least I would have Excel and that would be better than nothing. Um, Digital Skills Center will bring you up to speed on Excel, advanced topics in Excel, and then everything else that um, you can get around Microsoft through TechSoup. You know, obviously with cloud adoption being the big thing in the technology world for nonprofits, that means thinking about Office 365, which is the cloud-based version of you know, what you might just think of as Microsoft Office. It's the suite of programs like Word, Excel, PowerPoint that all come together. You can learn all about that stuff in great detail through the Digital Skills Center on the Courses platform. That Courses platform also has quite a variety in course level. Sometimes you sign up for an online class and you get halfway into it and you realize, I know all this stuff already. This is just wasting my time and I need something that's more advanced. What's great about the TechSoup courses is you could skip up to the 200 to 300 level and get more detailed in-depth instruction if you need it. Likewise, the reverse is true. If you're just a beginner with a particular piece of software and you really need that 100 level introductory instruction, you can find that on TechSoup courses as well. Remote work makes this all extremely important. And frankly, as we are all working remote, um, one of the things that is great is that these courses are accessible anywhere. So if you have staff who are working remotely and you feel like there's somebody who really needs a little bit of extra help learning how to use Excel, for instance, those courses are a great opportunity to do that. TechSoup also has other services beyond the courses that, that I just spoke about though that, that can really help with planning for the next year. Um, one of the most common one is what we call help desk services. And you just like imagine in your mind how many times has something gone wrong with a piece of technology in the office and you need help. You can't fix it yourself. You just need someone to call. And you know, you know, if you call the manufacturer, you can end up on hold forever. Um, and it's just tricky to figure out exactly who it is that you need to actually talk to to get help on the uh, tech problem that you face. TechSoup's help desk service is designed as a product that any nonprofit can quickly reach out to TechSoup and get help troubleshooting something. It's priced based on a one-off interaction, right? Um, we do have more advanced uh, supports that are also available. Um, there's a managed IT package where you can work with us like on, a, on an ongoing basis for a monthly or, or annual fee, um, where we can provide better support for all your technology stack. But for many folks, that helped us service is a real lifesaver. Um, I've also talked about Office 365 already. There are two final services that I really want to highlight here. You know, what we survey nonprofits all the time at TechSoup trying to understand better how they can get help or what they need help with. Um, and it's been very clear this year that one of the biggest sources or one of the biggest needs is 
the website of each nonprofit, and then their outreach efforts. And so we have two lines of service available through TechSoup. One is a website development service um, in which TechSoup works with a, with a great outside firm called the TAP Network who specialize in nonprofit work. Um, and we help nonprofits go through the process of assessing their current website, understanding what functionality they think they need, and then putting together proposals and packages to figure out how we can get that nonprofit's website to the place where they need it. Similarly, digital marketing or digital outreach is another very important communications function um, that nonprofits face these days, especially um, in a time when in-person events, although they are starting to come back, they remain extremely tricky to manage. And so, so much interaction is still digital and online. Um, and so achieving and putting together the right materials, you know, as I mentioned earlier, with Adobe Creative Cloud, for instance, you can design really great banners and graphics, but then you have to get them in front of people, often with email marketing, sometimes with ads, et cetera, that you might do through the Google Ads Network, or maybe some of you spend money on Facebook doing advertising there. Um, but website development and digital marketing services are both new and extremely popular pieces of the services that we offer to, uh, to TechSoup members. So again, just to highlight, all these services and courses are available through the TechSoup website when you go to the services dropdown. So if you look for that services dropdown, just bring it on, just click on that. You will find all sorts of interesting things um, that can be helpful. Kate, I see your question. Yes, TechSoup courses does require a different login than the main TechSoup login. Um, sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too tricky to just get in there and set up that account in the first place. Um, what's great on the other hand is that, you know, when you use the TechSoup product catalog, you have to be an authorized TechSoup user who's specifically okayed to make purchasing decisions on, on behalf of a nonprofit. The courses website is a lot looser than that uh, because we really want nonprofit staff to be able to use it. Um, and in many cases, those courses can be free. So the, the barrier for entry on the courses website is much lower, it should be easy for you to get in there, set up an account, log in and take a look at what you wanna, uh, what you wanna get. Um, so uh, let's see, I wanna make sure we've got all the links in here. Um, I'm gonna drop in the link for the help desk services here. I think I wanna make sure um, Aretha, let me know if my link is showing up properly now. I know that I had dropped a couple in and I think I only shared it with the panelists, which was not super helpful, but fortunately, Aretha and John are there yes. making sure everybody sees it. Okay, great. It. So there's the link to the help desk services. Um, and then uh, for website services, I'm going to drop this link in there right now as well. Um, here we go, website services, and then digital marketing and outreach services. Here comes that link as well. Now, I realize I have been doing a lot of talking here and that's what these webinars can be like. Um, but uh, that's really the bulk of the content that I wanted to share with everybody. Hopefully some of these links um, are helpful for you. Um, and with that, I want to just open it back up for questions and comments in chat. Um, let's see if, uh, if anything jumps out as a common theme here that we can try to clarify or follow up on for anybody. Great. And thank you, John. He's been answering a lot of questions in the Q&A section. I see there's a question that just popped up in the Q&A section. Um, Nick, if you want to take a look at that. And just a reminder, this has been recorded. You will get the recording. And I will also add all the links to the blogs and the other links that we have spoke about in the email when I send the recording. So Yvonne, your observations about Journeys, Trillo, 
do you does that ring a bell to you nick i'm not seeing the question to be honest in, okay uh, in the q a section at the bottom of your screen you'll see q a hmm. so uh, journeys uh, is is new to me so uh, this is first time i'm hearing about it yeah i don't know about journeys to be perfectly honest um Trello, I do know about. I don't use it personally, but I know folks in our design department who do use it. It's essentially a project management system where you can drag, you know, cards through a sequence of, of work steps to track how, uh, how a project is doing. Um, I think Trello is great. Um, it's, it's more a question of it, does it work the way you need it to work? And that's kind of always the, the key with these technology products, right? It's like, they're all great at something. Um, is, is that the exact one that you need? I don't know, but it's, but it's definitely reputable. And I know lots of people who do swear by it, but I don't know about journeys. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. See the question from Larry, any membership management software offered through TechSoup? Hmm membership management yeah that's a great that is a great question um i'm not uh, thinking of any specific membership management right off the bat um john is typing something in here maybe he has something to share great yeah um larry is are you talking about for instance uh just a crm you know uh so the database of of folks that you work with or something more sophisticated where you're talking about the actual management of the payment system i think those would be the key questions i would think about you probably know what those are already the latter option he said. okay um yeah, great question. I can promise you we'll get back to you after the webinar with a more complete answer. Um, you know, we have several hundred products available to us at this point, so I'll just need to double check on there. Great. Okay. Um, Jerry, are there any board member management and governments software? Governance software, excuse me. We do have a board management package, which I'll let John dig up and get you a link to on there um, that, that I think that does have a governance um, aspect to it as well. Yeah. So I, yeah, we'll get you a link for that. Uh, I'm just, I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but we do have that. Awesome. Um, Yvonne put the links for journeys there. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Good. And Janice says Microsoft now has a system for nonprofit membership management using their Microsoft Dynamics. I don't think it has payment in it. So that's a comment. Uh, Anne says, I was more referring to building security, access to buildings, type of software and hardware. So I guess this must be related oh. to a previous question, Anne. So you're talking about like a card key mechanism, I think maybe like where you're able to access a building securely, that kind of thing. I am not aware that we have something like that right now. Allison, I see your question about grant management software. Yes, we definitely have grant management software, a couple of different packages. The integration with QuickBooks desktop is a good question. Um, I see John is answering that right now. And I, I'm going to say, I think Asana, it's good for board management. Using that, you can um, give your board members tasks. You can see when they completed them. They can make comments. They can upload documents. So Asana is a great uh, software for managing board. Um, Kate says, any courses on Power Automated, Automate, excuse me, part of Microsoft Office 365 suite? Kate, great question. I am not aware that we have a course on Power Automate, but I'm going to kick that over to that team and have them double check. And by the way, you know, um, even when this webinar is over, we spend some time pouring through the, the chats and questions and, and we will respond like post webinar with specifics on anything we can find for you. Um, you know, that, that's, that's related to your specific question. Again, like our entire mission is to support you in this stuff. So we'll, we'll do that back end work and get back to you. 
Yeah, and I wrote that down too about Power, power Automate. If there's not a course, then maybe um, someone can teach a course. Um, Mary Page says recommendations on conducting email marketing distribution to avoid being blocked or ID by a spammer. Oh, Mary, you're speaking my language. Believe me, I, I know your pain. I get the struggle. Um, yeah, look, we do have um, we do have several different email platforms available through TechSoup. Um, Constant Contact is one of them. Um, Get Active is another. Um, I believe we may at some point be able to bring um, a uh, HubSpot in, but I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but I think the big question you really have is around how do you do that in a reputable way? Um, and, you know, this is, a, this is a tricky thing for nonprofits because we kind of gather these lists of supporters and, and folks that we want to communicate with all the time. We really should be using an opt-in system where folks are signing up on your website for updates. Um, you know, even like the free version of MailChimp or something like that does let you do that. Um, and uh, when folks, because the, the real thing is that when folks have, have the need to have the option to unsubscribe and um, if folks unsubscribe and we don't honor that, that creates a sender reputation problem for you and you will get hit as a spammer and um, your IP address can get compromised. Um, so I'd say the main thing is just make sure that you are using an unsubscribe link and that folks know how to get off your list if they're on it and they don't want to be receiving it. Um, but there are definitely several items in the catalog and we'll ping you with those links at the end of the, uh, after the webinar. I know, Allison, um, John answered your question about the uh, course for QuickBooks Desktop Nonprofit. We actually have a course coming up in August. So um, he put the TechSoup courses there, the link there, but we actually have a course, QuickBook course coming up in August. If you go to the events page under the community, then you'll see the course. It's not listed yet. I'm going to put it up today, actually. Okay. Um, SharePoint. Is SharePoint a part of uh, Microsoft offerings from TechSoup? Yeah, I'm going to double check that right now. Um, we do, yeah, we do have, share, we, we've certainly had SharePoint every time. I wanted to, you know, these catalogs change here and then I wanted to check. Yeah, we do have um, both donated and discounted versions of SharePoint available through the TechSoup catalog at TechSoup.org, um, you know, without knowing specifically what it was that you needed. Um, I'll just point you to that um, and uh, just start there and uh, you should be able to find what you need. Um, Tuan said, has, have you ever heard of every action? I don't see that they offer a discount. Is there a, another option for this nonprofit CRM? There's so many new CRMs coming out like every day, I, every action. I, I don't know of every action specifically, but yeah, to, to Aretha's point, there are so many of them coming out all the time. And there are lots of, um, you know, there's lots of platforms that are built for nonprofits that, that just run their own independent service and, and don't coordinate with TechSoup. Um, I don't think every action is in our catalog in particular, um, but I, yeah, I haven't used it, so can't tell you uh, much about it, to be honest. Okay, great. John, thank you. He's, he's, he's jumping in there and answering all these questions. Um, how about Calendly or Doodle or something similar? I, I seem to constantly be scheduling meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, Angie. Um, we do not have either of those. Uh, I'll be honest, all my scheduling these days is pretty much done straight through Outlook. Um, but that's tricky if you're scheduling with folks who are outside of your Outlook environment. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to actually send that to our product team a little bit because they're always e eager to hear about what folks are looking for that we may not have. So that's a, that's a great call out. Thank you. Yes. And as somebody else put in there, Google Calendar um, is another option. 
So sort of like calendar options that are linked to larger productivity suites would be more the direction that we have right now. And Tuan says, I know Salesforce is being offered at a discount, but it's hard to use. But is it hard to use? That's a question. I've heard it's difficult to use. Well, sale, yeah, Salesforce is not available through TechSoup, to be clear. Um, they do have their own uh, line of communications with nonprofits. And um, I would say like Salesforce is extremely powerful. Um, if, you are, if you don't consider yourself technically savvy, I think trying to adopt and implement a Salesforce platform on your own would be hard, um, but you can do it. And like I said, it is extremely powerful. Um, but I think kind of the, the, the word of mouth I hear about is generally you probably want to work with an outside agent, consulting firm, expert on implementation because it can be tricky. But um, you know, I think they also have quite a bit of support materials themselves. Um, and I know they're, you know, they're very committed to helping nonprofits. So um, I, I wouldn't dissuade you for any reason from like pursuing that. Okay. Rita says, my organization regrants funds to smaller nonprofits. Do you have any grant management software that can help my nonprofit communicate and manage grants with other nonprofits? Salesforce has something, but it's very expensive. Hmm. That's a fascinating use case. Um, Rita, I think we'll have to get back to you after this to, to, to see if there is something that does that. We, again, we have several grant management and grant oriented platforms we work with, but I don't know. I don't know about your specific use case, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I don't know, would a CRM be useful for her to just basically communicate with them and manage them, be able to, you know, put them in sections or folders? I don't know. John is, he's typing an answer for you mm -hmm. though. He's, he's finding something. John has done a fantastic job. Thank you so much for being there, John, in the background. So, um, uh, Rishwana says Salesforce teaches you and guides you one-to-one. Um, -one. So. Um, as, as Nick said, self, Salesforce is very powerful. I've heard nonprofits here um, come on and say they use Salesforce, but maybe they're not using all their features, but they said that they like it. So um, I, I guess it's a preference. I have to give a shout out to the whole group today, by the way. Usually I go through these questions I'm like, yes, we have that. Here's a link. We have that. But Y'all are stumping me today, which is great because it means that there's more work to do and we have to go out and find some new stuff. So I, I really appreciate you sharing um, with us what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, this is great. We love hearing from you and finding out what's going on. I'm gonna send a survey out as well. We would love for you to um, you know, answer the survey when we send it out with the video replay. Any other questions? Can we have your email, Nick? Can we have your email address? <laughs> Yes, yes, you can. I will put it in chat right now. Awesome. And Angie, thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much for all the great information from the panelists and attendees. She has to go to another Zoom uh, again. You're a busy woman, <laughs> Angie. Busy is good. And thank you for coming. Well, do me a favor, um, write, type in the chat room one of your takeaways. I know I learned a lot today. There was some software that I didn't know about. Take, write in one thing you learned today uh, was an aha moment or like, okay, wow, I knew that, but I didn't know this about that. So, and your thank yous are welcome as well. Um, Nick did a great job. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, please come back. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. <laughs> awesome. Um, CPAC is saying thank you. Debbie is saying thank you. Um, good, John. If you have a website or product question, please email customer service at techsoup.org. Great. Janice says she learned that new software that TechSoup has and the help desk support. Good. We love hearing that. Yes. Thank you from Katrina. Um, Carmen says many new software purchases to think about. 
Lisa will look into the 100, 200, 300 corp offerings. Yes, please do that. As you know, I think the 100 and 200 are free. I know the 100 are free, right, Nick? Um, but I mean, the, the experts that are doing the courses, you learn so much from them. Um, April says there's an, I think she's saying there's an app for everything. That's one of the things she learned. Um, Jerry says, thank you. Um, Kate had not seen the courses section before. I'm going to check it out. Great. This is why we do the webinars because um, there's a lot of things that people don't know about TechSoup. So again, we thank you for coming here to spend the hour with us to learn you know, what we have to offer. We spend a lot of time trying to provide information for you all and you know, gathering new technology. Um, Tr Trista said more about TechSoup. Good. You learn more about TechSoup. Mission accomplished, right? Excellent. Nick, mission accomplished. <laughs> yes. Collaboration, yes. Um, Yvonne, the volume of the courses offered by TechSoup. So you've been there, you, you, you saw it. There are lots of courses, lots of courses. Um, Mary Page said, Asana for board, for the board of directors. Yay, <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Tristan, like the courses offerings, looking into those too. Good, people are going over there and looking at it. Um, Kate said, we just got a new HubSpot and I wish I had known about the one offered through TechSoup. Listen, everybody, uh, I think Nick, you gave a quote over 70% of nonprofits say before they, you know, look for software or make a purchase software hardware, they always check with TechSoup first. Yes, we are your family. Check with us first. Ask your friends and families. Lisa says, thanks, Nick and Rita. You're welcome, Nick. I mean, Lisa. <laughs> Mike, thank you very much, very informative. Yes, this is very informative, even to me. And I'm here every day. Oh, Larry, I see your question. No, we did not talk about Boost, but um, I'm glad that gave, that gave you value and um, you know, keep that subscription going. It's a great, great line. Yeah, great, Paula, lots of helpful links. Yes, and resources, good. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, Lola Fai. Thank you for looking forward to the courses for two of my people on my team. Yes, yes. The courses are for your entire team. So yes, make sure you take advantage of it. Love that you have support of all sizes for all different types of nonprofits. Absolutely. I appreciate you providing the tech and helping us implement. It's intimidating. Yeah, I get it. We get it. We get it at TechSoup. We get it. Awesome. Well, thank you all again for joining us. I'd like to um, thank Nick uh, for doing this excellent presentation. Thank you, John, for being in the background. You are awesome. Thank you all. Um, all the nonprofits here, everything that you do for your community, we want to say thank you. But I always say, while you're taking care of them, make sure you take time to take care of yourself. And we will see you soon on our next um, webinars and ED chat and the courses. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.